Hey, what's up guys? Gordon Briley here and today we're going to assemble the speed bar. So we're going to go step by step on how to assemble it. Tools that we'll need, I have two three quarter wrenches. So whether you have one and a crescent wrench, however you want to go about it, but it's three quarters and you'll need two of them. And then you have a one eighth Allen wrench. And that's really the only tools that you need for this. I'm just going to go through some of the parts real quick. Some of them are still put together. I didn't take it apart fully because it's doubled up. You'll just do the same thing on the opposite side so you'll get the picture. So we've got a pull-up bar or the bar that connects the two ends. There's going to be four of the two and three quarter bolts, uh, four nuts, there's washers, there's four fittings. Two of them are still on there, like I said. There is four one inch by half inch bolts. That's gonna, that's gonna lock down these plates, so it's gonna bolt these down. You have to not mind my hardware because I've taken mine apart about 10 times and I don't use washers to protect them, so they're a little beat up. We got two, hand, two locking threaded knobs, that's for the pull up bar, or the, the bar that crosses, connects the two. A couple rubber, um, rubber pieces to help hold the weights on. We got two steel rods and then we have the rail nuts these are the weight plate holders in the handles that will go on to the bar and we also have shaft collars this is what you need the one ace allen wrench for and these will go on the bottom and top of the, the rods, which I'll be showing you here in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is to actually get to assembling the first piece. So this is one of the one of the pieces for one side of the speed bar. And this is where one weight plate goes. This is the other goes on the opposite side. And then you'll see that the fittings these fittings here, which will have the UHMW on top, they're gonna go to the side, right through here, at the very top hole, facing up, where the UHMW is up, and then one on the very bottom hole with a through bolt. So these are the slightly longer bolts. This is the two and three quarters, I believe it is, with two washers, one on each side. So the first thing we're gonna do is assemble that. So it's just a bare steel rod right now, or steel bar, rail, whatever you want to call it. This one has the plastic piece on top, it should come with that already, and if not, you just put it in one side, pick a side, doesn't matter, it's the same. So, washer on this side, into the fitting, fitting into the top hole, washer on the back side. Nylon thread nut. Again, even on the bottom, there is no plastic cap on this side, so that's the bottom. UHMW piece that's on this is on the top side. So it'll be just above this, and that'll keep it off the, the plate that you'll put down in a minute. Tighten this up and then we want it nice and nice and flush. So mine, I don't know if you can see it, it's all turned. I'll just take it, straighten it out, sometimes run it a little bit past. A little bit past and then tighten it up and then get it nice and tight. So now that we have the one fitting on and in place, what we're gonna do is actually now get our weight plate holder slash handles onto this. So what we want to do is find this fitting and we want to put it to the side. Now what we're going to do is there is a slight pitch on these handles. They angle up slightly. So you'll have to figure that out and then these get mounted sideways to this fitting. So if this fitting is facing forward, 
I'm going to put this on sideways. So I'm going to pick one that goes in this direction. So I pull the pin and slide it down. So I pull the pin and hold it out and slide it so I don't scratch the surface. It's going to get scratched up sooner or later anyways. But again, on this next one, so we got one. This is the top. It's got the plastic piece up top. So this is angling upward. And then this next one, we want to find the angle on this one as well. And once we got that, again, same thing. Just going to take this. And slide it on. Both have the slight pitch upward. It's not, it's not a lot, but it's there. So now that we have that on, now we can assemble the fitting. And on this one, this example, the fitting is going to be on the opposite side that these are. So now I'm going to make this fitting upward. Your HMW is up, slightly raised above the top surface. Bolt through with a washer. Washer on this side. And then we actually put the nut on, the nylon locking nut. And then one wrench on this side. We're just going to tighten this up. And again, I want this to be straight up and down. So get it nice and tight. And then if it rotates on you, you can just kind of turn it back. But I want it nice and straight up and down so when that rod passes through, it's not cocked or angled. So now that I got this piece together, I'm going to just show you what it looks like. So the bottom piece is on. These are sideways, one going each direction, and this piece is on the top. So now the rod is going to get passed through this and then through the bottom after we put our plates on, and that's going to be the next step. I already have the other one assembled just like this. One facing one way, one facing the other. So if I just spin it, they look the same. They might be in different places where these are. It doesn't matter. I just put them on. So now we're going to actually start the assembly to the rack itself. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to getting the rail prepared for the rod that passes through. There's going to be one of these on top, so flat three-hole fitting. So your rail nut, this rail nut, you'll put it in there sideways, like so. Just put it, push it right in there, and all you do is turn it. So there's a groove, there's one side that has a cut out of it, it's hard to see, but that's the direction you turn, and so it doesn't hit the side of the rail. So you just place it in here, that metal piece down, and then just turn it, piece of cake. So now we're going to take one washer, one of the one inch bolts, so short stubby guys by half inch, pass that through, and then through the fitting. So I just have that through with the washer. And now I'm going to take that, place it right on this, right into the thread of this rail nut. I'm just going to Tighten it up a little bit, just hand tighten, but I should still be able to slide this around because I'm going to need to maneuver it. But now all I'm going to do is go from this bottom side and then I'm going to do the same thing up top, which I'll show you right now. Okay, one rail nut goes in here, turn it, it's all set, bolt, washer, into the fitting and then just place it up here it's facing the same direction so the the bolt is in the far end the bottom one was the same way and then 
the long part with the holes, the other two holes are facing this direction, which is the same as the bottom. And if you have it backwards, just bend it around. It's just hanging tight and right now, so no big deal. Okay. Now what we're going to do is grab one of these rods. And we're going to grab this piece that we assembled earlier. The plastic part is up, so that's the top. If you have a high ceiling, you can just lift this up, put it into this hole of the fitting, pass it through. Obviously, if you don't have a tall ceiling, just lay it down, get some room, and you're just going to slide this down until it passes through top and bottom. So next we're going to actually start to place it into the holes. Okay, so now I got this. I'm actually going to the farthest hole from the bolt that's on this end. Now I'm going to pass this rod through this first hole on this end. Just pass it in there. And then next, we're going to move it through and pass it into the bottom hole. So now we're passing it into the bottom hole. Just lift it up. So this is a tight squeeze. What you have to do is slide the top back. So I'm sliding the top back towards the back of the rack. So you can slide this one forward so you have an angle and then just place it in this hole. Make sure the top one is in as well. And then just slide this one back. It's a little, little tricky, but it's okay. Okay, so it took a little jostling around, but now I was able, by angling it, so the top went that direction, the bottom slid to this direction, angled it, got them both in this first hole. Now we can actually start to take measurements to see where we want it. So the first thing, depending on what rack you have, how much room you have, that's going to kind of depend on where you want to put this. So what exercises you want to do, how much room you have, you got to kind of figure it out what's going to work best for you. But the good part is it's only a matter of a couple bolts to move this around. So the one thing is I look for is I don't want to be any closer to this. So if I move it towards the rack itself, we want enough room where this can spin and not hit the, the actual upright. So we don't want it to hit here. We want enough room for it to pass by. So that's good. So what I would do is once I found the placing, wherever I want it within this rail system, I'm just gonna make it where it just misses. So I got plenty of room this way too. So it doesn't hit there. I'm going to hold the fitting so it doesn't want to turn. And then washer, it's already in there. Then we're going to tighten this down. We don't have to really tighten it yet because we might want to decide to move it. Okay, good. So now I'm going to get a tape measure and measure from this distance from the upright to the center of this rod. So this distance, and then I'm gonna take it to the top and measure from the upright to the center of the rod up top, and then tighten this bolt down as well. And then at that point, it's nice and level plumb against this upright. So I'm gonna get a measurement, and then get the top squared up, plumb, and then Tighten them down, not over tighten them yet. And then we'll actually do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to show you how to actually secure the rods inside of the rails. Eleven inches to the 
center. Now we've got the same gap. Just tighten this down, doesn't need to be super tight. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. So here's one thing you're going to want to look for. You're going to want to look and see which direction these posts are relative to the rod. So if I have it on this side of the rod, which is fine, it works that way, or this side, I just want to make sure that the other side, this one, is going to match. So when it's like this, I want to make sure that the post that's on the outside, facing upward slightly, is going to match that. So the fitting is on this side, just like this one is. This post that's out here is facing the same direction. So here, when I move it over here, it'll match. When I install this, so this one on the inside is the same as this one on the inside, and this one outside is on the upper portion of it. So outside, upper portion, this side, same as this. Now what happens is if you get this part wrong and you screw it up, it's not that big of a deal at all. All you would do is take this, this bolt right here, undo the nut on this side, and then take these off, pop the pin, slide them up and off, and spin them around whatever direction you need. So it'll be pretty obvious if you make that mistake, but again, no big deal. It's just a matter of taking this nut off pulling the bolts back out, or just leaning this away and pull the pop pins and strip them right up. So no big deal. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. So it's just repeating that process, so I'm not gonna do it again. We're gonna actually move on to how to fasten down these rods. All right, so now we're gonna fasten the actual rod through this fitting. So the rod passes through that last hole, I'm gonna swing this out of the way so that exposes the end. And then I have the shaft collar. You just wanna make sure that the set screw is backed off just to the point where it's not sticking down and it won't get in the way of the rod that's passing through it. So now what I wanna do is actually pass this, just set it down in there. I try to get the set screw pointing outwards Push it in, lift that rod up. And just watch it. You have to get it just right. So I got the shaft collar onto this rod and it should slide right up against the bottom side of this fitting with the rod passed all the way through. Okay, so mine, since I've taken it apart a bunch of times, was a little tight on there, but yours should slide right onto it. And you're gonna pull, leave the rod pushed all the way down and then pull all the way up on this shaft collar. Sometimes, depending on the room, you might want to get like a cell phone or a flashlight and just shine it in there. Make sure that the set screw is facing you. Get this out of the way. And then just stick the end on there. Stick the Allen wrench right in the set screw. And Again, make sure you're pulling all the way up. That's a piece of cake. So next, what we're gonna do is actually just repeat that process. We're gonna go to the got another shaft collar. Make sure the set screws out of the way. So you're gonna pass it up into this piece. Get it onto the rod. And now, Get where you can see it. You want to 
get it to where the set screw is facing out towards you. And then I like to lift up, pull up on the rod, and pull down on that shaft collar to try to get it really tight. Get any slack out of it and just tighten it up. And now this is assembled. So here we can actually go back, make sure this is nice and centered. So right on that rail. Now we can tighten this down. Don't let it spin. Just get it really tight. Now we're just going to repeat that pop process. Put the shaft collar on the bottom. It sits all the way down into the rail. Pull it up so it's hitting the bottom of the fitting. Tighten it. Come to the top. Pass the set screw onto the top of the rod here. Pull it down nice and tight. As tight as you can. Lift up. Pull down. Tighten. And then we're just going to do the same process on the other side. All right, so now that I've actually assembled this side, so it matches this, I pulled the same measurement from the rail, from the upright to the center. So on mine, it was 11 inches from the rail, upright, and then I matched it here. So now they're going to be straight across from each other. So just things to think about or look for. So when this goes up and down the rail, you shouldn't hear any metal on metal. So if that happens, you'll just want to check sometimes. Just take the wrench. Just make sure these are square. That it's passing straight through that. So that's one thing. If it continues to do it, then you can just let me know and I'll get a new fitting to you. So these pieces, the rubber, they'll go on whatever side you want to put the weight on. And this is just to help hold the weight. It's not going to permanently affix it to it. There's nothing to tighten it down. So it's just kind of to help keep the weights there. So you're just going to have to check them every once in a while just to make sure they're not moving. But these should be pretty tight at first. They'll break in a little bit. So again, just make sure that the when this is on this side of the rod, here, these, here, then these are both on the inside facing in. Now they're even. On the bottom side, they're facing out. If not, like I said, you just take these off and then take these and spin them around. Just make sure they're always on the direction where they're pointing upward. So they have that upward angle, which mine are good. Now lastly, we're just going to attach our bar and threaded knob, so quick knobs. And this is where all you do is put the knob through one of the holes, spin it on, you can spin the bar at the same time to speed up the process. Normally, it's going to be holding itself right at the distance or the hole that you're going to want to put this other one into. You can count the holes, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, make sure they're even, but this is really easy to, to make sure you're on the right one. So when this bar is tight, When this bar is fastened, these should be nice and square, nice and square to the end of the bar. If for some reason it's too close and they're not flush to the ends when you go to install this, then it's probably the rails down low or up high that just need to be scooted out. So if you um, already bolted, bolted them down, you would just loosen them up and move them out. A little bit so this is nice and flush and square when you put these on because these need to match up and they have to be on the same side of the rod so right now they're both on this side when I installed the bar obviously one couldn't be on this side and one on the back side then it wouldn't line up it'd be cockeyed so make sure that you do that and then there's other videos for different exercises to utilize on this so that's pretty much it for assembly. Um, 
this bar can be moved anywhere with any within any of these holes and then you'll just have to get used to where to move these ones for different exercises because there are so many different things that you can do. Now you guys should be all done assembling your speed bar. If you guys have any problems, make sure you reach out and we'll make it right. We'll fix whatever needs to be fixed, but we just want you to be happy. So let me know if you have any issues. Thanks again for watching.